It's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the third edition. Did I mention that psychiatry has also been very successful in using the DSM to infiltrate our court system? The courts, too? Yep. The clinical diagnosis of a DSM-4 mental disorder is not sufficient to establish the existence for legal purposes of a mental disorder. That's a very interesting point. Basically what the authors are saying here is that the material in the DSM has no uh, utility in the courtroom in deciding guilt or innocence. It should not be used in courtrooms as part of the legal process. Wait a minute. Didn't the DSM just state that it cannot be used to establish the existence of a mental disorder in a court of law? Precisely. And yet, it is used all the time. Yeah, like in the insanity defense. More specifically, not guilty by reason of insanity. How about custody battles, civil commitments, probate court? She doesn't currently suffer from any type of mental illness that would make her a danger. I've read about psychiatrists appearing in court on opposite sides, each using the DSM to bolster his case, yet each accepted by the court as an expert witness. There was no evidence, if, as far as I could see, for psychosis or delusions. Because he's suffering from narcissistic personality disorder and a delusional disorder, a complete contradiction. It hasn't always been this way. In the beginning of the 20th century, a psychiatrist in a courtroom would be laughed out of the courtroom by and large. Um, today it's commonly accepted testimony as long as it's in accord with the DSM. The danger in using the DSM in a court setting is that uh, you're using a vocabulary uh, that the judge or the jury uh, doesn't fully understand. Uh, they are, by concocting these uh, psychobabble words, it makes it seem like there's something there that may not be there. The courts have allowed all this junk science to come into the courts and they've made case law on it and once the case law is made we're stuck with it until it gets overridden. They come in with tests, they come in with their uh, diagnostic categories from the DSM and they say we've done tests, we've determined that this person has this numbered malady and therefore they do. And there's almost no way to pry a judge out of, uh, of accepting that. When a psychiatrist makes a diagnosis in court is that the person is sent to a mental institution deprived of liberty and we have no idea whether he's guilty or not. On the basis of DSM diagnoses Someone is involuntarily committed to a psychiatric institution every 40 seconds. That's just so wrong. And anyone, anytime, can lose everything because of the opinion of a psychiatrist. Listen to this. I went to a stop smoking course at Vanderbilt. And uh, they, uh, the doctor, the, the, the lady that ran the program, uh, said that she wanted, she goes, you need to be, uh, we need to get you on a stop smoking medication. So she pre prescribed me Zyban. Well, after the fact, I find out that Zyban is nothing but this really powerful antidepressant called Wellbutrin. Yeah, I stopped smoking, but I, I had no idea the hell, I mean the hell, uh, the hell's gates were being opened. When, uh, when I started taking Zyban. I had been clean and sober for 18 years. I, you know, just never considered that. But something about that, I started experiencing the craving to drink again, and my life fell apart. Divorce, uh, relapse. So then a, a sibling of mine, I got wind of my relapse, uh, wanted to gain control of my pocketbook and my life and uh, found a dirtiest lawyer in town who knew you know one of the dirty psychiatrists and uh, bought and paid for a, an evaluation had a hearing in a court with before i was ever served notice and the next thing i know uh, every right that a human being can possibly have was taken from me and uh you have less rights as a conserved person than you do as a criminal. 
I mean, you are stripped of every right. You can't enter into a contract. You cannot marry. You cannot sue. You cannot even fight the legal system that has involuntarily uh, put you in this. And it was all based on the psychiatrist's diagnosis who never evaluated me. That's unbelievable. He was just trying to quit smoking, but instead got a psychiatric diagnosis and his rights taken away? All his money gone, too. Not to mention being incarcerated in a mental institution. But if you think what psychiatrists do to individuals in our court system is bad, wait till you see what happens to families. Children are taken away from parents every day in these juvenile courts because um, a person with a, with a PhD or an MD after their name comes in and says, I've shown ink blots to a person and they may be a risk to a child. Just in my little state of Massachusetts here, there are 11,000 children in captivity taken away from families at any one moment. And uh, almost all of those children are being drugged. And uh, our, our own commissioner of uh, children and families testified under oath that they drug 88% of the children that they take out of the families. 88% drugged? That's almost a sure thing. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. All over the world, psychiatrists are using the court in any number of ways to take away people's rights and destroy families. Just watch. Psychiatry has affected my family through the family law court rulings. The family law court has um, a court-appointed child psychiatrist who, it appears, determines the future of the child. It's just like a business in the court system that they forced you to undergo all of these uh, psychological evaluations and you have to pay thousands, thousands of dollars but at the end of the day it has been supported by no evidence, nothing. They would said to me, Deb, you have a choice. Either you bring your son to get medicated or will take your child away from you and put them in a home that they'll medicate your child. And then you, good luck, basically they were saying, good luck Deb to try and get your son back, but you'll get him back medicated anyways. And they put her in hospital and that's when the psychotropic drug, drugging started with Becky. And at that stage I had no say over it. They refused to let her go. They would not let my daughter go unless she take medication. This was again a recommendation from the psychiatrist that once my son was radically ripped from his home and literally kidnapped and put in a new home with a perpetrator of domestic violence and of sexual assault and is where he now lives, um, this psychiatrist said that he was never to have any counselling and never to see anybody. To have your family just disrupted like that, ripped out from under you, really, your whole life, just gone like that. Um, and then you have to fight every day to get him back. It was very devastating. In some ways it's worse than a death because it's unresolved and you know what the truth is. And uh, you feel like giving up and not fighting back for that custody of that child, but you can't. Um, yeah, there's just no justice. This is terrible. They're tearing families apart based on arbitrary diagnoses rampant in the courts. Exactly. So it's unfortunate that the courts have bought into the DSM. It's unfortunate that the whole psychiatric profession is wedded to the DSM. It's unfortunate that the psychiatric profession is in bed with the drug industry, and it's unfortunate that drugs that don't work are the common prescribed drugs uh, for all manner of conditions in children and in adults. Um, it's the wrong way to go.